In the last lecture, we learned what is a pure and impure pipe in Angular and why should we not use pipes for data filtering or sorting. Now, we will try to understand how we should implement sorting or filtering logic in the Angular without using pipes. It is not required to use pipes for filtering or sorting. In fact, we can write the filtering or sorting logic in the component class itself where we need it. Or if we want to use the filtering or sorting logic in the multiple places in the application, we can write the filtering or sorting logic in the service class. So let's see how we can achieve filtering or sorting by writing the logic in service class. So the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to remove this filter pipe from the student array. So as we learned, we should not use pipes for filtering or sorting. So I will remove that filter pipe from the student array. Next, what we will do is we will write the filtering logic inside this student service. For that, here we have this create student method. After that, let's go ahead and let's create a method called filter student by gender. This method, it is going to take a parameter. Let's call it filter by and it is going to be of type string. And inside this method, we are going to write the filtering logic. And in fact, we already have the filtering logic inside this filter pipe. So from here, I'll go ahead and I'll copy these if else statements and I'll paste it inside this filter student by gender method. And in here, instead of list, we are going to return this dot students. So basically we are going to return this student array. And then here also it should be this dot students. Here also it should be this dot students. All right everything looks good and this filter by we are going to receive it as a parameter now when are we going to call this filter student by gender so first of all we are going to call this filter student by gender method when the page initially loads for the first time so let me go ahead and let me first close this percentage pipe and also this filter pipe and let's go ahead and let's open this admin component.ts and in there we are assigning this students property with the students array of the service class. But instead of doing it like this, what we are going to do is here, we are simply going to call this filter student by gender. And in there, we are going to pass the value of this filter text. So if you remember this filter text, it is going to store the value which the user will select from the filter dropdown. So here, let's go ahead and let's pass this dot filter text. So initially when the page will load, this filter text will be all. In that case, all the students should be displayed. Let's save the changes and let's go to the web page. And you will notice that initially all the students are displayed. But if I go ahead and if I change the selection here to male, it is not filtering the data. That's because now what we need to do is when the selection will change here, we need to call the filter by gender method. For that, let's go back to VS code and let's go to admin component.html and let's scroll to the top and in here what we are doing is we are doing two-way data binding on this filter text now instead of doing the two-way data binding like this using ng model what we will do is we will individually do property binding and event binding so here i'm going to bind the value property to this filter text and then i'm also going to bind the change event so whenever the value will change we want to execute some logic. Let's assign a method to this and let's call it on filter value changed. And let's go ahead and let's create this method inside this component class. So let me go ahead and let me create it here. So whenever the value will change in this method, we will get the dollar event object, right? And in here, let's go ahead and let's specify a parameter. Let's call it event. And it is going to be of type event. Now inside this method, let me go ahead and let me log this event. Okay, so if I save the changes, we go to the web page. Let's just quickly check if that drop down is working or not. Let's go to console tab. Let's clear everything. When I select, let's say mail here. So you see an event has been logged in this event object. We will have a target. So let me scroll down here. We have the target and in that target. We should have a value. 
So you see here we have that value and the value is male. If I select female, in that case, another event will be logged and there also we will have a target and from that target we can get the selected value. So here a log event dot target dot value. And here it says property value does not exist on event target. So for now, I'll simply set it as any. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. And let me clear everything. Now, if I select male, you will see male logged here. If I select female, you will see female logged here. And if I select all, you will see all logged there. So now what we need to do is from within this method, again, we need to call this filter student by gender method. So let me go ahead and let me copy this line from here. And instead of logging this value, I'll simply call that method and in there, I will pass that value, the selected value. So for that, let me create a variable here. I'll call it selected value. And to get the selected value, again, we can say event.target.value. And in here, let's pass the selected value. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. Let me close the console here. So initially, all is selected. So all the students are being displayed. Now let's go ahead and let's change the selection. So if I select male, you see it is still not filtering the data. Now why is that? That's because we are calling this method, but we are not assigning the value returned by this method to this student array. So that we forgot. So let's go ahead and let's do that. And now let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. If I select male, now only male students are displayed. If I select female, only female students are displayed. Now, if I go ahead and if I create a new female student, let's say test gender is female. Let's select a date of birth. Let's keep the course as MBA. Let's specify marks 420 and fee is one to double nine. Let me save this student. So that student is saved, but still that student is not being displayed in this filtered list. So that student's gender was female and here we are filtering for female students only. So that student should have been displayed here in the filtered list, right? But it is not there. If I select all here, you will notice that that student has been added. But when we filtered for females, that student was not showing there. So to solve this problem, all we have to do is we have to go back. And when we are inserting a new student using this on insert method, after that, we are also going to call this filter student by gender. So again, let me copy this. Let's paste it here. And again, here we will pass this dot filter text. So this filter text will be assigned with the value which the user has selected from the dropdown. So now if we save the changes after a new student will be added again, this filter student by gender will be called with the filtered text and that time the new student should also be filtered. So if we go back to the web page, let's filter for female. Let's go ahead and let's add a new student again. Let's say test gender is female. Let's select a date of birth. B tech marks 420 fee one to double nine. Let's save the changes. And for some reason, after we have added this new student, it is showing all the students. Now, why is that? That's because here we are passing the filtered text and initial value of filtered text is all. If I scroll up, it is all. But when we are changing the selection in the filter dropdown, the change event is happening. So in that change event, we need to set this value to the selected value. So here we have that. So here we need to say this dot filter text equal to this selected value. Otherwise, its value will never change. It will always remain all. Let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page and let's filter the student by female. Let's add a new student. Again, I'll call the student test. Gender is female. Let's select a date of birth. 
marks let's say 420 and fee 1299 let's save the student now and now you will notice that in the filtered result the new student is also added okay now if i go ahead and if i try to change the gender of this new student to male then after i save the student since the gender has changed to male this student should not appear in the filtered list let's see if that's the case so if i save the student that student is still appearing in this filtered list but this is not correct so again what we need to do is after we have edited a record what we want is we again want to call this filter student by gender method so again i will copy this line let's go back to edit method so here we have on edit saved so in this method after we have done everything we also want to call this filter student by gender and again here we will pass this dot filter text okay let's save the changes and let's quickly check if it is working or not so let me first filter by gender so i'm filtering for all the male students now what i want is i want to change the gender of mark what to female and when i change this student's gender to female and when i save it this student should not appear in the filtered list because here we have searched for only male students so when i save the changes here you will notice that now that student is not appearing in the filtered list because there we have changed the gender of that student to female in the same way if i select all it is showing all the students and let me go and let me try to add a new student but before that so if i want to cancel insertion i can click on this cancel button okay so before that what i will do is i will select all the male students and then i will go ahead and i will add a new male student for example suresh he is a male date of birth let's select the year okay marks 420 and let's see fee is triple nine let's save this student so you will notice that new student is also appearing in the filtered list so now our filter functionality is working as expected now i also want to mention that there are many other ways in which you can implement this filter functionality this is not the only way in which we can implement this filter functionality but this was the simplest way i can think of in which we can implement the filtering functionality so i have used this approach and in this way we can implement the filter or sorting logic in the component or service class itself here we have seen an example of filtering in the same way we can also implement the sorting functionality and we don't need to use a pipe for that and this implementation is also not going to cost any performance issues so in this lecture i just wanted to show you how we can implement filtering or sorting logic without using a pipe if you have any questions so far related to pipes, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.